Hello. Uh, welcome to another episode of Dubbed and Subbed, uh, episode 18. Yes. Uh, we are going to talk about episode, let me quickly bring up my notes, 33 and 34. Yay. And today is a lot of revelations because uh, on the previous, not previous episode, let me see. Oh, um, on the preview from the previous kind of ep two episodes, this episode is going to be uh, a lot of new information about All Might and the One for All quirk. Yep. So, and uh, today we also uh, got to make sure we're, we're not doing any product placements. So, everything is all bland. Cheers. Bland it out. Yes, cheers. And I'm also kind of nursing some kind of sickness. So, yeah, uh, spent a whole year of uh, doing a after school program with high school students. Did not get sick throughout the whole year. And after two weeks of saying goodbye to like seniors, I get sick. Do you feel like maybe it's just like the summer, the summer school is It's probably in? the summer and like coming in and out of, of everything right now. Mm -hmm. And so, sorry not sorry for me profusely sweating. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's a thing. You, know, you have to sick. let it sweat it out. Yeah. Uh, these headphones don't necessarily help, but the fact that I don't let anybody use these headphones. So, yeah. I mean, if you gotta let it air out, you gotta let it air out. Yeah, I'm just I'm being honest. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so without further ado, uh, we're gonna talk about episode 33, which is Listen Up, A Tale From The Past. So, in the summary, is the it's the, uh, the final goodbye between Gran Torino and Deku. Um... There's a race to become first, so that's in reference to later in the episode, and uh, there's like a um, return to kind of like normal class activities. And then the truth comes out, kind of. And I mentioned this before when I uh, actually watched the sub version, before I, I used the dub version as like a kind of like a refresher, mm -hmm. that when I saw this episode, I was just like, damn it. They do that stereotypical thing of like, oh, I'm gonna have to tell some important information and not tell them everything. Yes. And uh, how much I was a little bit annoyed by that. And so. Oh. Yeah. I think at the time I was a bit annoyed, but you know. On rewatch, you're not as. I think I'm on the rewatch, and like, we'll, we'll explain it further because the whole point is like, this is a series, not like a movie right. that needs to wrap up stuff mm -hmm. relatively quickly. And so, uh, we start with a cold open. Gran Torino and Deku are saying their final goodbyes. Deku gives, uh, wait no, GT gives Deku some advice on his powers and nags him about uh, the way he's using it. Mm -hmm. Deku asks why doesn't uh, Gran Torino gets recognition um, because like, with the power he has and the effect he has like, um, in battle, mm -hmm. like he's not, like he's surprised of like why isn't he being more recognized as like a class A hero and like what doesn't more people know about him and he basically says that he was he's uh, that he is he's not interested as uh, working as he's more interested as working as a pro hero but the only reason why he got his license is because he can use his powers freely yep sorry that, that took a long time <laughs> for me to say that um, and then Gran, uh, as Deku leaves, Gran Torino is kind of like his senile self for a second. Yeah. Is like, who are you? But but Deku, um, like he starts saying, it's like, oh, I'm Midoriya. And then instead of uh, the second time he asks, is like, no, I'm Deku. Mm -hmm. And then you hear a voiceover. It's like he's kind of like All Might, and like his kind of passion to become a hero. And so. After the intro, we're back in class. Sarah and Kirishima is making fun of Bakugo's hair. It's still slicked back, isn't it? It's still slick, slicked back from the uh, best genus uh, internship. Uh, we got this. Uh, we got the students filling in their time from uh, from their respective internship. Earphone Jack, Froppy talks about their internships. Uraka give, gets enlightened. So the way she's designed is like she's kind of like tranced. Yeah. So that was kind of funny. Uh, the class asks Deku, Tenya, and Todoroki about their experience with the hero killer. Todoroki confirms the official story that his dad saved them. 
So it's just more of like, they're gonna enforce this kind of lie. Um, the class talk about how the hero killer is somehow um, being coined, uh, um, uh, becoming more public and um, popular mm -hmm. amongst kind of like the League of Villains. And um, it's kind of telling us that that viral video that we saw in the previous episode that we talked about is th there's more than just villains looking at it like it's been um po like other heroes to be like the general public are, are is seeing like this video of like the hero killer and his message do you feel like that might maybe like commentary on how the world is right now because like mm -hmm. if you ever look at like other okay i guess you can't call them villains but you, you can call them like in real life criminals you know? right Similar things happen where they become idealized and stuff like that. Kind of like uh, how Old West, we kind of idealized the cowboy, the renegade, kind of the rogue. Mm. Like the gunfighter. Yeah, I could kind of see that. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, I don't want to make it into like a, like that big stereotype, but like, it's like everybody likes the bad boy kind of trope. Maybe maybe it's more like his, uh, his reasons for fighting are very relatable. Mm-hmm being alienated is that uh that was was being mentioned in the video um, and like his message of like the pure form of like being a hero is is becoming commercialified maybe yeah. yeah i mean like in in uh my hero there's like a oversaturation of heroes obviously yeah. because everyone has quirks so to kind of roll back and go into like the uh the more idealized version of like what a hero is, mm -hmm. I think maybe that's what's potentially dragging people in about his message and why he's becoming popular, maybe? Yeah. And I think that uh, another sense of his message that um, I don't know if we mentioned on the previous episode is like, there's a false sense of kind of security. Mm. And I feel like there is a sense that even with a, by a hero of peace, like the symbol of peace, All Might, um, I don't know, there's like a complacency and like heroes are seen not as heroes but more as like glorified policemen. Yeah. I guess. So so I guess he's kinda of disillusioned by that notion. Yeah. That it's like, oh, like heroes are not heroes anymore. Mm -hmm. You know? So I think that's interesting. I think I'm lumping a lot of different ideas together. A little bit. Um, I think I'm rolling over my words, but let's continue. Mm. Uh, class with All Might. Uh, the class of 1A gathers in a training era. All Might tells them that they are going to do hero basic uh, training, which is a race that uh, is basically the focus is to rescue All Might. Uh, Tenya asks if they're doing rescue. Wait, they, he asks why are they doing a rescue training but not at USJ? And then All Might says uh, the USJ facility is more about. Uh, natural disasters and kind of the focus he wants is that he wants the heroes to adapt to a rescue situation when a person needs to be rescued mm -hmm. um so deku sero ojiro ida and pinky pinky yeah are challenging each other uh the race starts sero is in the lead and until deku passes him uh, Deku is beating Sero by using his quirk efficiently, from what, what we learned from the previous episode. Uh, but Midoriya slips and falls, and Sero wins. Um, another thing that I forgot to put on here is that Bakugo noticed the way that Deku is using his quirk, mm -hmm. and it looks very similar, and he, and he gets really pissed. Yep. And uh, this kind of plays into a bit of like the future episodes, but... The fact that Deku is kind of learning more and like he has this backlog of knowledge but now that he's actually training with other heroes that actually use their quirks, he's actually applying those that knowledge and like the knowledge he has in the field. So mm -hmm. I don't, at this moment, Bakugo's, uh, um, oh, are you okay? Oh, burping. Oh, it's a burp. We were, ta we were talking about you earlier uh, and I was like, oh, you okay? Yeah, no, I'm just, if you see me doing this, it's because I'm, I'm burping. Oh, okay. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> and then, uh, let's see. Uh, and then Baku is just, like, really mad about it. But at the same time, in my mind, that's the whole point that they're all at UA. 
to learn from each other. I think it's specifically because it's Deku who's the one doing it's probably it. Probably that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then also, I think it's probably kind of like it. Maybe it's like a possession, possessive thing. Like mm-hmm. you know, it was my move first. Like, yeah. why are you doing it too? I guess so. Yeah. I never thought about it like on a possessive way. I just thought about it as like. This is a place of learning. Why are you so mad about that idea? I mean, yeah. in a learning environment, the most ideal situation would be you learn from your peers and then use some of your knowledge to eventually further yourself as a person. Mm-hmm. But I think, like, UA specifically has kind of like a competitive nature to it because yeah. it's superheroes learning to be superheroes. And then there's top- all, yeah, there's also like, rank- oh, sorry, keep that idea, but like, there's also rankings within the school and even out of the school. Exactly, like, yeah. yeah. So I think the competitive nature make of being in this kind of school makes it so that like a possessive thing is much more important. And then mm-hmm. on top of that, it's the uniqueness of all of these characters, you know? Mm-hmm. They all have different quirks, and obviously their quirks are not going to work the same way from like person to person, right. but because the moves are so similar and mm-hmm. it's probably like a like a uh, you uh you took my move from me yeah <laughs> type thing um it's kind of like going back to the whole hero killer thing it's like the gamification of like heroes mm-hmm. almost and it's like the like the ranking system and he might be also mad about the ranking system like this idea that heroes are put on this pedestal mm-hmm. so i think maybe that's why you wanted all might to kill him <laughs> Oh, you mean like the hero killer? Yeah, the hero killer. Mm. Just, just bringing it back to the, our previous statement. What do you say though? I mean, I think the hero killer was like... Oh. The only person worthy to kill me is All Might. And I think that's because All Might embodies the ideals of what a, the hero, a, a traditional, traditional superhero is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, after the race... Uh, oh wait, Deku gets a message from All Might um, after falling down. Um, All Might tells Deku to meet him later so he can talk to him uh, about his past. Right. Yeah. After the race, the guys of 1A are changing in the locker room. So this is the more light-hearted part, as much as light-hearted could be. Light-hearted in, yeah. in My Hero is a is a very interesting place because is the not the episodes sometimes get light-hearted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, you need the within the drama you need some levity, or know? else it's just never. That's why George R. Binks exists. <laughs> a better example see through PO and R2 Key 2. Anyways, um Star Wars talk. Um after the race, uh the guys at um of 1A are changing in the locker room. The, they are talking about their improve uh, how much they improved since uh their time at the internship. Min- Minetta notice uh <sighs> Minetta makes a Shawshank redemption quote. Notice, uh, which means, notice a hole in the wall to the fe- female locker rooms. He perfectly describes what he wants to see peering into the other side, but earphone Jack uses her cork to poke Minetta's eye. Uh, the girls are horrified that there is a hole and states that they want to close it as soon as possible, but earphone Jack is wondering why Minetta didn't mention her at all. Yikes. Yeah, it's funny, but it's also like as somebody if like, like, you know, I'm just like, oh yeah, wait, these are also high school students, and it's like, oh. I mean, I think I was for me watching that scene, I was like more disturbed because the the Jack goes into his eye. Yeah. I'm yeah. like. Oh I, yeah, but yeah. Right, like. He should not be able to physically see out of that eye after getting Anymore. stabbed into it. Oh. By a 3.5 millimeter jack. Oh, that sounds painful. <laughs> yeah, but this is an anime, so... You yeah. know, he also cries out blood. Did he? Oh, oh shoot, did he? I mean, not in that scene, but he's cried out blood before. <laughs> oh, that's also very fair. I think in the next, on, on the next episode he did. Oh, he did get a nosebleed. Nosebleeds are common in anime, though. That's very fair. Uh, Deku meets All Might after that horrid situation. Deku and All Might, at the end of the uh, school day, talk about the hero killer, um, kind of in private. So he, uh, 
the all my kind of reminds Deku of like what he said about the quirk and like how he how he gets it. We get a little kind of comic relief when Deku repeats what he says and he has to face up all might mm -hmm. to, to like eat his hair. But um, the point of that uh, little hero killer sidebar is that to reassure Deku that even though the hero killer tastes his blood, the one for all quirk doesn't transfer to the hero killer. Mm, but Deku wasn't even thinking about that, right? Yeah, Deku was not thinking about that at all at, uh, at any point in time. So it's just another little detail mm -hmm. that which is interesting, it's like, that's... You have to willingly give it away. Yeah, willing to give it away. Either willingly, or it's like, please take this. Do you feel like the anime is gonna, like, go back to it at some point? I hope so. Well, there's more to this kind of, like, um, revealing situation oh. that, that uh, I want to mention, because I don't think they mentioned specific characters, they just mentioned some backstory. Um, uh, All Might tells Deku about the chances of the hero killer. Yeah, that's not possible. All Might talks about the backstory of the one for all quirk. The, uh, the origin stretch as far uh, back as the beginning of the appearances of quirks. And so this is the thing about the show that I didn't realize there's a kind of like time reference. That technically there has been kind of multiple generations of this quirk that started. Yep. And that it's not set in our time present, you know, even though everything kind of looks, it very, looks similar, very similar, but it's like far into the future. Yep. And I never realized that because Deku has a comment here where he says, it's all like, if quirks never really appear, they would be having internet, like intergalactic, uh, summer vacations, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, wait a minute, at what point? It's like, maybe I've just been watching it and forgot, like, all those intros where he explains it, but I was just like, oh shit! That's, That's right! A thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing! Um, uh, yeah, so it stretches all the way back when there was a, a quirk called All for One. Yep. And the cliff notes, which, you know, off my notes, uh, it's basically All for One got very greedy, he steals quirks from other people, and he becomes kind of like the more most powerful per, uh, quirk holder in all of Japan. And he bestows this kind of quirk to his younger brother? Yep. Or protege, I think it's brother. They're, it's his he, brother. It's his brother. And the quirk, his brother was born quirkless, and he gives him a quirk called One For All. And so this is kind of like the origin of that. I mean, technically, the brother was born with a quirk. It was just a dormant one because there was no use for it. Oh, okay. Because his uh, the brother's quirk was essentially the ability to pass on quirks, but he had none. Mm -hmm. And so when his brother, who, um, who, you know, now that I think about it, his brother is technically like the Amon of this universe, mm -hmm. like Legend of Korra status. Oh, oh, that, that that's a deep cut that I don't know about. Though. Oh, do you not know of... I've never watched Legend of Korra. Time to watch Legend of... Well, I didn't finish Legend of Korra, so... Uh, anyway, so, like, um... I want to say that, like... So, okay, the whole story is that the brother obviously has the ability to steal quirks, give them out to people, yeah. and whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but when he gave the brother a quirk, and they, in the show, are like, they don't know if it's whether it was out of, like being like gratuitous mm -hmm. or something like that that kind of made it so that his brother's quirk had like use now because yeah. then he had the ability to kind of like stock pass it down pass it down yeah. and stock up power mm -hmm. and so one for all and all for one became foils of each other and the mm -hmm. same thing is kind of shown with how the quirks work because all for one only has one holder mm -hmm. and one for all has had generation of holders. And then can have one or two holders at the same time, right? All for one? No, one uh, one for all. No, oh, Deku, right? Deku is yeah. right? Yeah. No, it's only one person. One person. Okay, so, alright. So that's why um, All Might is where he's at. Or we'll, we'll get to that in the future. I think in the future. I think we're jumping the gun at some point. This, yeah, we're jumping around, around a lot around of a things bit. because season three is already out. So, but yeah. um, long story short, mm -hmm. it's it's the ability to stockpile 
and pass on quirks. That's what All for One is. And with the generations of different holders, it's been passed down from generation to generation until it hit All Might and now Deku. Now Deku. I wonder if it's also, besides quirk, is like information. Because we did see shadow figures in this, in this within this uh, season when Deku is being in a trance by the person from class 1B. I don't I mean 2B. This yeah. is really turning into Avatar. Um I don't think it's it's the passage of information. The information comes from you talking to the previous holder. Okay. I think there's just with the shadow people like if you want to go back to tournament arc with the mm-hmm. uh, with the shadow people that he saw it's not really that I think it's a manis- manifestation of the powers in a physical form. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you could call a vision a physical form. Maybe just kind of like the history, but not like full detailed history, maybe. I don't know. I, think I just interpreted, like with this information, I, I interpret it as the quirk has the power to pass quirks down. And like it can, uh, like the power level becomes better, like bigger as it passes it down. But my thought was like, okay kind of information too because i'm equating it to the previous arc mm. yeah to me that's I, where my mind was at yeah. yeah to me when i saw the shadow people to me it was like the the manifestation in the show of what the power would look like yeah okay. you know so i i don't know if information can get passed on i don't think it does well we have season four coming up yeah, I, yeah. yeah we'll see we'll see um I guess we're just theory crafting right there. The you'll definitely like season four though. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes out on October. Yes. Um, sorry, am I missing anything? Sorry. Uh, All Might and the history is about the world. Uh, oh, he All Might suge- uh, suggests that All for One was destroyed when he uh, held the One for All quirk, but. He, a detail that he uh, talked about is that all for one, whenever he steals the quirks, right? And this was, um, the people become kind of like mindless zombies almost. Mm-hmm. And kind of reminds us like, oh, well, equating that information is like, th- these are possibly the origin and the reason for the nomus uh, happening around um, uh, like USJ and uh, Hosu, you know? Uh, and All For One gives his younger brother, yeah, De- Deku tells All Might that he'll try his best, but All Might has con- uh, has a conflict within his mind, but can't bring himself to tell Deku all everything, mm-hmm. which is something that kind of grinded my gears at the moment when I saw the subbed version, but also at the same point, it's like, this is a series that is going into its fourth season. So I'm hoping that All Might doesn't kick the bucket in season three. Which I don't think so, or season four. Like I, I want to see if, what new information that he can bring to the table for Deku, mm-hmm. unless Deku has to one hundred percent. What he mentioned in this episode is to learn it for himself. Mm-hmm. So that was something. At the end of the episode, um, training camp in the words, uh, but those who don't pass the final exam of summer school, okay. So Aizawa is telling the students that there's going to be a a series of finals, one being kind of like the test final, like sitting down on the table, the other being a practical final. Uh, And those who don't pass uh, will have summer school while the rest of the class will be going camping in the woods. Uh, Deku notices that All Might didn't mention uh, anything about himself and bad guy tower. Two people are, are talking about Shigaraki and how he will be the next master, um, which essentially is kind of like the difference, like you saying the foil of like these powers is like Shigaraki is taking, becoming the next all for one, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, the big bad in the uh, chair hooked up uh, to a series of tubes and states that uh, this piece that All Might is holding on to is going to end. So, end of th- that episode. Um, start in episode 4 because we're already in the halfway point of this episode. Let's just gear right up for that. 
uh, gearing up for final exam. So the students uh, come back from the internship, as I mentioned before. They're getting ready to know the rules and consequences from like the previous episode. And the so I don't have AC in my house, so all my windows are open. Hey, what's up, bro? How you doing? Exactly. Uh, the uh, the teams um, are get, are will get picked on this episode, and so and we'll start seeing the small mini details of how these uh, finals are gonna be kind of in the in the coming episode. In the coming episodes, okay. Cold open, so this is where Mineta gets his no clean. Uh, daytime talk show is talking about the meaning f uh, or the ethics of having female heroes wearing very quite revealing clothing. Mount Lady and Midnight are having a debate and end up in an argument over their costumes and kind of like the reasonings um, and it gets very, very petty about age, you know? Yep. And then Mineta is just eating it up. He's like, I'm here. Uh, watching it through a computer and getting an, get uh, as pervs in anime, getting nosebleeds in the middle of their room. Ugh. Good thing it's a shonen because that could have been way more graphic. Oh. Uh, after the intro, oh, the students learn about their finals and the outcomes. If they don't pass, uh, they will be tested on both an exam and a practical level. Aizawa leaves the room and tells the students to, um, you know, good luck, just get ready for finals. Um, and the scores are going to be an amalgamation between the final and the midterms. So as the midterms go, here are some of kind of like the uh, noticeable noticeable things that i saw uh, saw is yara rozu is number one mm -hmm. as we know Ida's second bakugo's third deku's fourth mineta's ninth kind of like a big uh a big head on that little guy i mean you know what it is i feel like you know maybe his character is that he's really nerdy and because he never got the attention yeah in school that's probably like the why he is how he is type thing i mean that could be a backstory thing you yeah know? i think this might be a lot more to discover about mineta maybe in season three there's more in his head head yeah he has m more ambitions than than meets the eye i think well i mean if if someone can you know want to be a hero because of money i'm pretty sure someone can be a hero because of Girls. girls and being popular yeah yeah that's true lunch time oh yeah lunch time with the students students talk about the practical exam everybody seems to have anxiety over this mm -hmm. uh monoma bumps into deku and asks him about the hero pillar and basically kind of tells him off about all the bad things that follow one one a and then um says that what other dangers are you going to bring onto this campus mm -hmm. and then kendo just basically knocks out monoma uh, and apologize for the grief that he's been giving them and Kendo suggests that the, pra the practical exams is going to be uh, with robots similar to the entrance exam uh, and everybody asks where she gets this information and she says it's like by upperclassmen but I feel like well, how could this be kind of too much of a secret you know because we never see other upperclassmen but we just assume that they're still around mm -hmm. so I'm pretty sure they could just ask and, you know i mean it could be that they're they're stuck strictly within their classes so or probably well segregated i guess yeah. or i mean the upperclassmen could be like doing their internships oh like different times oh so, they so they'd be out. out of school that makes sense yeah that's also the kind of true i never really thought of that actually mm -hmm. okay i always equate this as like how american schools are so i don't know if this is like a i mean without revealing too much because i read some of the manga Oh, okay. So I know kind of what happens in season where there are a couple of like students that do internships. So. Oh, okay. Uh, he basic yeah okay so Kenda suggests that uh, the students feel relieved because uh they can handle these robots. Mm -hmm. Uh and they kind of go back into like hey let's just make sure we pass the written and kind of like test final. Uh, Bakugo tells the students to try to control their quirks because I think Bakugo has a sense that maybe things are not what it seems mm -hmm. and maybe it's just the idea that a lot of things has been happening recently maybe he has a sense like maybe there's a lot of maybes here 
you can do a drinking game on this, that there is um, going to be changes. So Bakugo has like a good kind of force tied into that. Uh, he co also confronts Deku on the way that he's harnessing his quirk and states that after the final, will be updated on the score, so he'll know who's best in class. Mm -hmm. Bakugo again with his kind of but situation, but yeah. Uh, after the commercial break, Yarrozu's home. Sero, Jiro, Ojira, uh, Mina, uh, Denki are meeting Yarrozu at his, uh, f uh, as a study session. Uh, at her home, realize that her family is rich. She's ballin. She's ballin, and then she comes in, kind of like looking like Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast, just like how's everybody doing? And then we get we cut to each student's taking their studying in their own different way. It's quick cuts too, so we're just kind of moving the story very fast and very forward. Uh, also, this is the beginning of the another sorry my mind is running like this is the beginning of a new arc too yes so i think these two episodes are, are the start of a new arc it's probably like the introduction into the new arc yeah and so everyone's studying bakugo hits i think it's kirishima no. is he the blonde haired one no the redhead oh yeah it is kirishima yeah kirishima um I think they're uh, they're actually more friends than Deku and Bakugo. <laughs> you know what? I think if anything, if in the perspective of Bakugo, Bakugo probably sees um, Kirishima like on the same ish level, but they also are kind of like butting heads every once mm -hmm. in a while. And then Deku is just lower than him. Yeah, yeah, always. Um, the last test rules. Okay, uh, all the teachers meet up the students. It is uh, in the assumed area that they are doing their practical test. Aizawa tells the students that their assumptions for the finals are wrong. Principal Nezu comes out in the, you know, his way of appearing yeah. in every episode. Just kind of like, precious. Wasn't he riding on someone's shoulder? It was Aizawa's. He just comes out of Aizawa's wraps. It's kind of cute though. And then, and then climbs down <laughs> from a single strand. Um, and so he's there to explain the differences and that the students are going to be paired up against one teacher from, uh, uh, from like the, from their studies, from, from their studies. Uh, we go back to a few days ago, the teachers talk shop about how to design the exam, the practicals there, practical exam. Uh, some teachers feel that the students are not able to finish the test due to its difficulty. Mm -hmm. uh, Nezu feels that to have, uh, because the, they just went straight to like having the teachers fight the students. Right. But Nezu feels that to have the students deal with and handle difficult situations is to push them. Mm -hmm. So Aizawa talks uh, uh, about pairing up the students with just one teacher, w uh, which uh, several considerations. I think there was big big three relationships teamwork and resourcefulness mm -hmm. so those are the three kind of criteria that um, he's kind of like um, testing these uh, doubles up mm -hmm. you know and so one of the pairings are Yarrozu and Todoroki versus Aizawa and then Deku and Bakugo versus All Might because obviously was because how could you not we you can't have Ron Hermione and and uh and Harry always fighting. How do you me. forget the main character? I don't know. I guess I was never that much of a Potterhead, but that's always true. I just outed myself. <laughs> um, the matches uh, as followed uh, because we got back into the class uh, gathering together. Uh, Cementos versus Rikido versus uh, oh, and Ijiro. Ijira? Ijira? Ijira. Ijira. Ectoplasm versus uh, Fumikage. Fumikage. Uh, and uh, Froppy. Uh, Power Loader versus Tanya and Mashiro. Mashiro? He's the one with the tail arm, right? The tail arm, yeah. Uh, Aizawa Yar uh, versus Yarrozu and Todoroki, that what we mentioned. 13 versus Uduraka and Aoyama. Aoyama? Uh, Nezu versus uh, Denki and Mina. Uh, that's uh, that Yeah, the next episode we'll see that. Uh, Present Mike versus Koji and Koyoka. 
Uh, Snipe versus Mezu and Toru. Uh, which also Snipe, if uh, when, you know Winter Cosplay comes around, I think I would probably dress up as Snipe. Um, nine Midnight versus Saro and Minaru. Min Minoru. Minetta. Yeah, oh, Minetta. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I just use his other. Use, yeah, his other name. All Might versus Deku and Bakugo, which of course that would be the last one. Yeah. Uh, rules for the um, kind of this practical te- exam is that the only way to win is to either capture your opponent or escape. Other than that, if you uh, you will lose by a being captured and being done in by the hero, or you run out of time, yep. which is uh, thirty minutes. Um, All Might explains that Hatsume from the design kind of classes uh, designed a handicap for the uh, the pro heroes, which basically are like these gauntlets that mimic fifty percent of the hero's body weight. So it just kind of cuts down their endurance, which probably is enough, but you know, who knows? We'll see more in, in the later episodes. Uh, in the monitor room, Recovery Girl, uh, Deku, and Uraraka meet uh, to see the competition. They say the uh, Deku kind of asks Uraraka why isn't he talking with Ayama about planning, and just kind of suggests that Ayama's just kind of like occupied doing other things mm-hmm. uh, and U- Uraka just kind of asked Deku the same question it's just like I don't think Bakugo wants to talk to me right now so that's why they're looking at the competition uh, the first track of uh, we see the first practical which is Cementos versus uh, Rikido and Ijiro uh, Rik- uh, uh, Rikido's quirk is Sugar Rush uh, which basically, uh, which with uh, with e- x amount of sugar he intakes, he uh, he becomes stronger. But the downside to that quirk is that the more he uses it, the less cognitive he is in in battle. So it's kind of like um, uh, the guy that has all the electricity coming out of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, they end up losing because Cementos quirk is more of like an endurance base. So, yeah, they end up kind of, like, mm-hmm. not doing so great yeah. in that one. Um, and that is kind of the end of this episode. Uh, there is kind of, like, a preview of Ectoplasm versus Froppy and Tokoyami. Uh, but other than that, um, I think this is a very good intro. It kind of brings in new stakes. Yep. For, for each character, you kind of get an idea of where Deku is after the kind of the intern hero killer arc. Um, you get some of these students dealing with kind of the news that what they had to deal with when it's kind of tough. It's like every uh, characters want to talk to Tenya, Midoriya, and uh, sorry, I forgot his name now, Todoroki about their situation but also uh, recognize that Tenya also has legit baggage now you mm-hmm. know with, with his um <clears throat> sorry gotta breathe out a gotta bit. breathe out I think I was just talking uh more and more than I should <laughs> uh don't get sick y'all sick is not fun sick is not fun um and and a lot of students are kind of um, understanding of like how he's um, how he's de- kind of dealing with his situation when it comes to kind of like dealing with the hair killer and how much that is also very personal for him. Mm-hmm. Um, initially, was kind of upset of what All Might is like not telling, but at the same point, it's like this is a series, not a movie, so it's like they're not gonna tell everything at one one crucial moment. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I get it now. After watching the dub, I was like, okay, I guess I get it. And so, um, I really want to see how each character, like, each team up works together, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So y- you get an idea that uh, all, all these teachers are very calculated. Aizawa is basically the one that's kind of mastermind this kind of pairing process 
between the students and their heroes. And so looking at this list, it's like, you know, I'm seeing like how Mineta is going to deal with being with uh, Midnight. Yeah. And uh, All Might and Deku, of course, is like those two conflicting ideas. You know, how much that uh, Bakugo really kind of hates Deku's guts. And basically, um, everything in these two episodes just kind of indicate that things are not going to go well with Deku and Bakugo. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I hope to see kind of like how that battle kind of works out. Yeah. Yeah. I've been talking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so so what are your kind of impressions about these episodes? Just to kind of like wrap things up. Um, impression wise, I think they're all like for the side characters because obviously the main ones you would you would have expected it to be that way anyways mm -hmm. um i did find it interesting that uh momo got paired with todoroki like when that first happened oh the uh for aizawa yeah i found it that pairing interesting but um that's more so because they both came in with recommendations mm -hmm. and obviously todoroki i think is doing very well but you can kind of tell that like momo is kind of like a little bit down on herself a little bit you would get a sense of that, of her vulnerability in these two episodes, mm. of like where she's kind of coming from. Mm. And having that scene, even though it doesn't seem in place, but it doesn't seem also out of place because it, it falls into a montage, that um, yeah, Rosu is coming from a very privileged life, you know? To me, it seems like it's a, it's a very, like... Um, She's a very book smart person, but when it comes to like street smart, she hasn't really figured that out yet. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. Um, some of the other characters, I didn't really think about too much as like towards their pairings. Mm -hmm. Like Saro and Mineta were like characters that I was just like, oh, okay, cool. That's but like Mineta and Midnight was like a, okay, yeah. Yeah, of course. It's like, yeah, Midnight's gonna. Mm -hmm. And then Principal Nezu, the ever loving ever loving principal i still yet to find a plush of nezu but i don't know if i doubt that. that exists I like i said or i think you mentioned it is that um if it's not a very popular character there's not merch for that character i think he's probably very popular i just think like it won't be a plush because it's a side character probably it's also very true you know i don't know he might it might happen but um i love my local hobby shop you know yeah, yeah i'm always checking and I do like Principal Nezu being like an actual physical character mm -hmm. in this arc just because it's interesting to see like some of the pro heroes and what their quirks are and how they work. Because mm -hmm. you know, obviously, I don't think we're going to be able to go through all of their quirks, but I think it's a good like intro to how they're, how they are in real life. I think we're going to get an idea of how they work, but not in detail like you mentioned yeah just like yeah. a brief like oh that's that's how they their quirks work that's interesting and we're, we're gonna revisit some quirks too because 13 is also in this lineup um all might is of course in this lineup mm -hmm. um we haven't seen power loader nezu fight sp specifically snipe snipe kind of fought too but you can kind of assume yeah it's just kind of like he's the mccree of this universe yeah yeah um, other than that, um, I want to do predictions, but also at the same point, it's like, I've already seen these episodes. There are no predictions. There's also no yet. predictions. Just know that there's going to be a lot of fighting, um, um, that's going to happen, especially mm -hmm. after seeing the first practical exam, uh, with Cementos versus, uh, uh, Rikido and, and Ijiro, there's going to be a lot of fighting. And in, in the next couple episodes. How about like in your initial watch, which fight were you most excited to see aside from like uh, all Deku my, and okay yeah. But uh, Bakugo. Um, Kenya and obviously Mashiro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the one with the big tail. I know that they're very fast characters, and I think that's why they were paired up with Power Loader. Mm -hmm. But Tanya, I don't think he and Mashiro has been paired together as kind of like a team mm -mm. up until this point so at that time i was like that's probably because tenya is my favorite character yeah so i'm just like oh i want to see how he, he adapts does. to this uh someone with this quirk mm -hmm. um the 
Todoroki and Yarozu was also something that I wanted to see too and uh, was expecting a lot out of. Um, but also, all of the next episode is basically called Yarozu Rising. Yeah. So, sorry, my throat hurts. No. Um, this is a cue. It's a sign. We gotta, it's, a, it's a sign we got to go. Really, really, really quick. But, like, um, she kind of has a sense, before I saw it, she has a sense of vulnerability and kind of like something behind her that doesn't, like, basically, like, even though she's smart, she doesn't have a good sense of self. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of see that in this character. Yeah. You know, because a lot of people that, like, I've, I've done project with high school students before, it's like, they don't see the potential in themselves, mm -hmm. even though that they get straight A's, or they do all these extracurriculars outside of school and stuff like that. And it's, it doesn't take, like, it takes a lot to get them at to a point where there's like, oh, I get it now, yeah. you know? Yeah. And relating my work to, to this show is that I, I wanted to see how Yarrozu deals with um, Aizawa and, like, Todoroki. Mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. This is our cue to go. This is our cue to go. <laughs> time so i hope you enjoyed this episode uh we're going basically two episodes by two episodes we're gonna wrap up season two uh we're gonna try to do season three when we might just power through season season three uh i don't think we're gonna do three episodes per, per yeah. episode probably not because there's a lot to cover in season three and i think we should at least uh respect the each yeah. episode so we're gonna probably not do too much of a season break maybe it'll just be one week mm -hmm. but uh we're trying to get geared up for season four uh, another thing is that i've been workshopping some ideas with you uh i don't know if you're gonna be 100 percent part of it but we'll see how that works i'm gonna try to test other videos will be coming in other videos will be coming in i might uh consider doing recaps before season four comes out so kind of spacing out the release dates for our uh, season, season three of dubbed and sub and um more travel videos to come on kind of like the more uh like digestible videos yes. because as much as i love doing this podcast there's also other videos that i'm also passionate about yep. so uh i hope you enjoy this and all the other content i have on this channel and uh we'll see you in the next one bye <laughs> About Game I don't know. Uh, okay, uh, it's like when uh, we hear all these prophecies, but turns out it's like it ends in like the most unsatisfying, <laughs> unsatisfying way. Okay, um, so I hope it doesn't turn out to be like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess until then, let's see on time. We're we're actually ending right on.